In the last lecture, we saw the definition of linear and nonlinear systems, and I also explained you how to find out if the given system is linear or nonlinear. Now, in this presentation, we are going to solve problems based on linear and nonlinear systems. We already know if a system follows the principle of superposition, it is known as linear system. And if the system violates the principle of superposition, it is known as nonlinear system. And based on this, we will prove the linearity of the given system. The principle of superposition is sufficient and necessary condition to prove the linearity of the given system. And the principle of superposition is composed of two different laws. The first law is known as law of additivity, and the second law is known as law of homogeneity. And we have already discussed these two laws, and we have also solved one example in the last lecture. If you remember the example, it was having the relationship like this: y t equal to x sine t. This was the relationship. And if you look closely, you will find the system is performing the time scaling because the input to the system is x t. This is the input to the system. And the output is x sine t. So if you compare x t with x sine t, you will find in place of t we have sine t, and thus there is time scaling. So this particular system is performing the time scaling. And after checking the law of additivity and the law of homogeneity, we found this system follows both the laws, and hence it follows the principle of superposition. And as it follows the principle of superposition, it is a linear system. It is a linear system. So when system performs the time scaling, it is a linear system. But it should only perform the time scaling because we have not discussed the other operations. We are only talking about the time scaling. So if there is a case in which there is only time scaling, then the system is linear system. Now we will solve. the first problem of this lecture and in this problem the relationship is like this y t equal to x t square and we are required to find out the nature of the system whether it is linear or nonlinear and for this we will first check if the system follows the law of additivity the law of additivity and to check the law of additivity we will first have two different outputs for two different inputs let's say the first input is x1t and when this input is given to the system it produces y1t and let's say x2t is the other input and for this the system produces y2t and now we will add y1t and y2t we will add y 1t and y 2t and from this relationship you can clearly see we will have x 1 t square plus x 2 t square because y 1t will be equal to x 1 t square x 1 t is the input and the nature of the system or you can say the functionality of the system is that it changes t to t square the input is xt in this particular case when we have xt as the input y it is the output it is equal to xt square so instead of xt we have xt square so it is replacing t by t square so here we have x1t and the system will replace it to x1t square in the same way when input is x2t the output will be x2t square it is very important to find out the exact functionality of the system and as we have seen the functionality in this particular case we can move on with the solution so when you add y1t and y2t you will have x1t square plus x2t square and now instead of adding y1t and y2t we will directly add the two inputs x1t and x2t and then we will feed it to the system x1t plus x2t and we will feed it to the same system we cannot change the system as we are required to find out the nature of this particular system so system will remain same throughout our analysis and now we will have a output let's say y dash t and based on the functionality of the system we will find out the value of y dash t 
the system is replacing t by t square so here we have t in x1 t and t in x2 t so they will be replaced by t square we will have x1 t square plus x2 t square and if you compare if you compare the two results you will find they are same so this particular system satisfies the law of additivity and now we will check the law of homogeneity we will check the law of homogeneity and for this we will take a constant let's say the constant is k and then we will multiply this constant to the output the input is xt it is given to the system system produces the output yt and now we will multiply the output by a constant k and it will give us k y t and as y t is equal to x t square k y t will be equal to k x t square right now instead of multiplying this k to the output we will multiply this k directly to the input so input is x t and then we will multiply k to the input this will give us k x t and now we will feed k x t to the same system and let's say the output is y dash t and we need to find out the output y dash t and again we will use the functionality of the system it replaces t by t square we have t here so it will be equal to k times x t square now compare the two results here we have k x t square and here also we have k x t square so the two results are same and thus the system follows the law of homogeneity and as the system is following the law of homogeneity as well as the law of additivity we can say that the system is following the principle of the principle of superposition and as it follows the principle of superposition the system is linear system so this is the answer of the first problem and you can clearly see in this problem also there is time scaling the system is performing the time scaling there is operation on time and the operation is scaling operation so now we can generalize the result we can say that whenever there is time scaling the system is going to be linear i will write down this important conclusion whenever there is time scaling the system is linear so in other words we can say that the system linearity the system linearity is independent is independent of time scaling independent of time scaling so this is one important property and you should remember this property because it will help you solve the questions quickly now we will solve the second problem in the second problem the system relationship is given as y t equal to x log t now as we already know the property that the system linearity is independent of time scaling there is no need to solve this question whenever you are required to choose the one option out of four options you can choose the system is linear because here we have the time scaling the time scaling therefore the system is linear system but when you appear in your university exam and you have to write down the solution then don't just use this property and write down the solution like this they will give you zero marks you need to solve the question in the manner we have solved the first problem so we are done with the second problem the answer is linear system now we will move to the third problem in the third problem y t is equal to x square t now you can see there is no time scaling here we have t only there is no t square sin t or log t so there is no time scaling but there is x square t so let's find out the nature of the system here x t is given to the system and it produces a output y t which is equal to x square t so what is the nature or functionality of the system the system is 
producing the output which is square of the input it is square of the input so this is the functionality of the system and based on this we will try to find out if the system follows the principle of superposition or not so let's first check for law of additivity for x1t we have y1t and it will be equal to x1 t square and for x 2 t we will have the output y 2 t and it will be equal to x 2 t square this is what we have we can write this directly because we know the functionality of the system and now we will perform the addition of the two outputs y 1 t and y 2 t y 1 t plus y 2 t it will give us x 1 t square plus x 2 t square now we are done with step number one in step number two instead of adding the two outputs we will add the two inputs so we will have x1 t plus x2 t and now we will feed x1 t plus x2 t to the same system and it will give us the output y dash t now we are required to find out the value of y dash t we already know the functionality of the system it will square the given input the input this time is x1t plus x2t so we will have the square of x1t plus x2t so y dash t will be equal to x1t plus x2t whole square and if you compare the two results you will find they are not same and as the system is not following the law of additivity it will not follow the principle of superposition and hence the system is non-linear system so this is the answer for the third problem and now we will move to the homework problem there is only one homework problem for you and in this homework problem y t is equal to x cube t cube this is the system relationship and you need to tell me whether the system is linear or non-linear once you have your answer post it in comment section i will end this lecture here see you in the next one